Black Panther suit and a mystical, heart-shaped herb are what give T'Challa his abilities and make him the King of Wakanda. It is often mentioned that the Black Panther suit is handed down from king to king, but who was the first King of Wakanda? To understand the succession process, first we need to know where the suit came from. Before Wakanda was united, it was a series of battling African tribes located in East Africa around Uganda or Kenya. The setting was around 10,000 BC. The panther cult's mythology claims that the panther goddess, Bast, sent a meteorite to their village. The villagers called the meteorite's material, Rare Iron, that was later renamed Vibranium. The meteor crash site is called the Vibranium Mound and is the only known source of Vibranium in the Marvel Universe. This is a point of contradiction in other Marvel comics, where claims are made that natural forming Vibranium can be found in Antarctica. The villagers discover that Vibranium gives off a form of radiation that poisons the mind and soul of anyone in proximity. Following the crash of the meteor, demons began terrorizing the location. The only person whose soul is not poisoned is the greatest warrior selected by the panther goddess Bast, whom she anoints as the king of kings, the Black Panther. His name was Bashinga. Bashinga single-handedly united the tribes of Wakanda to form an army of protectors known as the Panther Cult, to defend the Vibranium Mound from rivaling tribes and those who intended to steal a shard of Vibranium. The Panther Cult also prevented the further corruption of souls who came in contact with the substance and therefore carried out the will of Bast. However, Bashinga's title as the first Black Panther may have been overwritten. T'Challa establishes Bashinga's origin in the 1977 comic issue number 7. But as of November 2017, the comic Marvel Legacy Volume 1 has introduced the Stone Age Avengers, which contained the first Black Panther. Marvel Legacy is considered to be canon to the Earth-616 universe, and therefore revokes the title from Bashinga. In this issue, the Stone Age Avengers take on a celestial creature known as the Fallen, alongside a younger Odin during his binding of Maljanir. But what qualifies one to be Black Panther? The powers given to Black Panther consist of two parts, the Vibranium Suit and the consumption of the Heart-Shaped Herb. Both are known to be used by T'Challa and Bashinga alike, but we know very little about the origin of the Black Panther from 1 million BC. Regarding the Vibranium Suit, Bashinga wears the same suit seen on T'Challa when protecting the Vibranium Mound. In contrast, Marvel Legacy's version of Black Panther simply wears the severed carcass of a panther draped about his body. Throughout Marvel Legacy, Black Panther is never seen performing any inhuman stunts or portraying any of the abilities seen in Bashinga or T'Challa. Furthermore, the Stone Age Black Panther could not have consumed the heart-shaped herb either because the herb was a mutated plant that resulted from exposure to vibranium. The first recorded introduction of vibranium is through the meteor in 10,000 BC, and therefore the herb could not have existed. The lineage of the name Black Panther may have started with the unnamed Stone Age Avenger, but the origin of the modern Black Panther's role begins with Bashinga. Because Bashinga formed and built the nation of Wakanda, he began the lineage of Black Panther rulers, founded the Panther Cult, and was given the blessing of Bast to wear untreated vibranium unharmed. Bashinga's actions also lead to a monopoly on the market for treated vibranium, which led to Wakanda becoming a technologically advanced nation by the time T'Challa was born. Without the accomplishments of Bashinga, the modern Black Panther never would have stood a chance. Thanks for watching this episode of Hero History. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this one, and as always, have a marvelous day.